he wants us to live in health such that we are the givers of life god doesn't want us to bless abraham he wants to make him a blessing do what the scripture is saying and save yourself from a whole night of crime a man who has a vision will cater for you yesterday and come and sing this morning and the angel does not chop off your neck the institution of marriage that's why you don't marry your sister you have to marry a stranger so that you learn how to tolerate what you can't explain Amen. try again and tell your neighbor I love you okay if you don't like that word tell them I'm tolerating you around me Listen, every wealthy man in the Bible, the ultimate of their success was to paint the glory of God. It was not for a show. When God blesses you, he wants to display himself better through you. Your success should not be a bragging you don't intimidate us with your success. You show us you are God by your success. Am I talking to you? 
If you are a woman, the ultimate picture of a woman is the picture of the church. The ultimate picture of a man is the picture of Christ. If there is no Christ in the question, you are living in ecclesiastics. Vanity. I want to beg you, before wrinkles begin to develop, portray the beauty of God. It will be useless if you age, only to realize you try to impress people who are never impressed. Because all human beings have comparisons. It's only God who relates with our uniqueness. Listen to me, baby girl. Every man who comes close to you will look at you in comparison and tell you you're beautiful, but in subject to what is in their subconscious. Because men have, by the time a man says you are beautiful, he's comparing or he has an interest. When a man says I love you, he means something more than what I say. Because men use words as a currency to win their intentions. It's only God who says I love you for what I want to do for you. You are beautiful for God. You are sharp in school for God. You are blessed for God. You are in good health for God. You are gifted for God. Corona did not take you away for God. God saved you in your family for God. You are talented for God. You are in that office for God. That's the ultimate. If Christ is not in the question of what you call your life, you have no life. In him, we live. In him, we move. And in him, we have our being. Let me give you two, three examples and then I will be done. Abraham comes to the limelight. When God called him out of his family. Look, look at this. Mungu wali muambia toka kwenu. Sikia. Baba ya habra manaito haram. Alikuwa tajiri. Alikuwa nini? Lakini mungu waka muambia habra. Utajiri wa baba yako haram. Tera. Utajiri wa baba yako tera. Inje ya makusudi ya mungu. Inaitua mali ya waofu. And I want to save you trouble. Anything called wealth outside Christ, the Bible calls it the wealth of the wicked. Don't be moved. If it is not in the question of redemption, it is what the Bible says, God allows the wicked to gather wealth and store them up for the righteous. The only challenge is that the righteous are taking forever to grow up. Are you in the house? Yes. Abraham, the wealth of your father, according to heavenly description, does not exist. Look at your Bible. The father to Abraham was supposedly wealthy. He was the richest in his time. But according to the economic standards of God, he had no wealth. So Abraham is told by God, get out of your father's house. Go for yourself, for your own advantage, away from your country, from your relatives and from your father's house. That is his wealth. To the land that I will show you. Listen to the next words. In that land, I will make of you a great nation. Listen, look at me. That land which you left is your former nature. The new land is your new image in Christ. Amen. You left the land of your father, your relatives, your family, your tribe and you join the family of God. Only 
what happens within the corridors of Christ is what heavens accounts for. Let me make a statement you need to think about. Heaven only records what you do for the interest of the kingdom of God as an investment, word a reward. Let me explain again. It is only what you use or do or invest for the interest and the propagation of the kingdom of God that heaven registers to have been invested in heaven. Anything that ultimately does not glorify God is not registered, does not enter the books of heaven. And if it is not in the name of the Lord with the kingdom interest, you can claim a harvest. That's why the Bible says whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Because human beings have a tendency of forgetting or outgrowing or changing. Do it as unto the Lord. When you honor your parents, do it in relation to the script. When you help the poor, do it according to the script. When you are helping a brother or a sister, do it according to the script. It is only what is done in the name of the Lord within the corridors of his word that attracts a reward and you can demand for a harvest. Is that Mrs. Mahet? Did I see Mrs. Mahet? No. Listen. Look at me. If Christ is not in the practice, the harvest has been lost. Write it down. If Christ is not in the practice, the harvest has been lost. Because you will always think about what you did, expecting the beneficiary to respond with kindness. Nikukune nikune. Kurudisha mkono. Mbingu inaandika na kurechesta yale umefanya. I had a statement that transformed my life. That the woman called Dorcas, Dabida, she was not a preacher. She was not an elder. She was not a pastor's wife. She was not in protocol team. She was nobody. But she's in the Bible. Courtesy of a needle and a thread. Shindano. You know, in your crotch. Nausi. Murembo yula na ito nani? Tabita. Ako kwa Bible. Alifufuliwa. Ako kwa watu wa imani. Nisemu ya maandiko. Kwa sababu ya shindano. Na usi. Sikia. Tabitha. Was raised from the dead. She's in the Bible. Because of a needle. And what? A thread. She saw clothes for widows casually in her time of pleasure. When she died, the widow said, God, we appeal. By virtue of a needle and a threat, the bitter is in the Bible. She was raised from the dead. Kwasa babu ya shindano. Na usi wenye muko na mudomu webu mnijaribie. Kwasa babu ya nini? Shindano. 
Nani na nani anashona hapa? Okay. Nani anashona pande hii? Nani ashaoshona? Sijasema nani ni mshonaji, nasema nani ashaji. Nani anajua shindani? Wa oh, Kristo si ni machambasi. Shindano ni shilingi ngapi? 5 bob. Usi ni shilingi ngapi? 10 bob. Tabida ako Bible. Akufufua mtu, hakuombea mtu ajaswe roho. Tabida hakuimba, hakuwa mama kanisa, hakukaa mbele, hakupewa juice, hakupigiwa makofi, hakupewa cheo. Alikuwa na shindano na usi. Hebu kiangalie. Ujaibishe. Jiambie tu ole kwangu. Kamba tabidha. Ako kwa Bible. Kwa sababu ya shindano ya shilingi tano. Na usi ya shilingi kumi. Fifteen bob. Ako kwa Bible. Alifufuka. You know why you are behaving like that? You have a lot of empty space that is not occupied in your head. The Bible says an idle mind is the garage the workshop of the devil. We have too much potential that is not engaged. So we look for somewhere to release that energy. So it becomes negative energy. We want to know. Listen, we are so idle that we allow politics to divide us. Write on your notebook. Dabitha. In capital letters. Tabitha, the stroke Dorcas, those were her names. Is in the Bible. Was raised from the dead because she served God with a needle and a thread. Simple. You know why Tabitha is in the Bible? Because to God, what determines life is what you call your ultimate. What is the climax of this thing? What should it climax in? What should it be ultimately? Christ must be seen in what I do. Because it is in him that I live. It's in him. That I move. It's in him. That I have. My being. Like the moon. Is to the sun. We don't have. The light. The life. Of our own. Apart from Christ. Let me repeat it again. Like the moon. Depending on the sun. For light. So is our lives. Without Christ. As the ultimate purpose of our practice. What we do. As no light. Has no life of its own. Marriage, business, success, progress, long life, outside the illumination of Christ, if it does not reflect Christ like the moon reflects the light, it is vanity and it is lost. The only time you see the moon is when it catches the clips of the races of the sun. The only time you become relevant is when you catch the clips of the races, the light, the life of Christ. Can I tell you something? When you live in Christ, your status is irrelevant. You are not measured by what you have and what you don't have. What you ate and what you didn't eat. Whether you are married or single. 
whether you have children or not, because the relevance of the same if they were to happen still must be Christ. Listen, you have no life outside Christ. You have no meaning outside Christ. You have no business outside Christ. Listen, every man that is described in the Bible as a, as a, as a success, he's described in connotation to the purposes of God. Anybody else who achieved anything in the Bible outside God is not part of the scriptures. And if they are, they are a warning sign. Look at the people who took success outside God. God killed them. God withdrew his light and they became walking corpses. Listen, you have no life outside him. Let me prove it to you. Anything that has no Christ is full of stress. In Christ, he says, my yoke is light. Now he says, my, my, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Learn from me. Listen, you can't work without him. Because it is him who blesses the work of his hand. The Bible says he blesses us for his glory. God promotes us for his glory. God preserves us for his glory. If you remove Christ at the center of your work, it becomes meaningless and stressful. Your Bible says, unless the Lord watches over the house, the watchman watches in vain. Listen, friends, you can take your children to the best school. You can darling them the way you want. You can show them the love. If the ultimate of their life is not Christ, you are breeding wind. It will take one storm. That's why I want to recommend to you Kenyans. While it is parenting to take your children to school at six, it should be better parenting to take your children to church at six. I'm coming home now. I am coming home now. I can tell you for free what you are raising by the values you are developing. If Monday morning is not too cold, but Sunday morning is too cold, you are not a parent. You are a slave to raise the next generation and die. You have no legacy. School don't make anybody. If they make any, they make the obvious. I'm so proud when I wake up here in the morning and by six, I hear children playing in the church compound and I can tell tomorrow is safe. If during rainy season, you will still take your children on a border border to school, carried by a stranger, paid, and on Sunday it is too early and too cold to bring your children to church in the morning. Some of you are courageous enough to leave them at home because it is cold in the church. And you want the church to create something to warm your children. And you don't demand the same in your school. No. Listen, that is how you are raised. That's why you are an issue right now. We are trying to undo the wrong things. You are given money for chips. You are never given money for offerings. You are taught you are right. You are never taught humility. That's why you sit somewhere and see an elder coming and demand it is my right. I paid for. That's why we have no respect. You find a church like this, you can't tell who is a mother, who is a father, who is a teenager, who is a youth, because we have no values, we have no boundaries, because we are schooled 
upstairs, but we are bankrupt down here. Knowledge goes here, values goes here. The head makes you a professional, the heart makes you a human being. Listen, friends, how many of you are trained in school on submission? Submission. How many of you are trained in school how to love a woman? How many of you are trained on how to submit to a man? How many of you are trained in school on how to tithe? How many were trained on how to help the poor? How many were trained that you don't answer your mother and your father straight? No matter how wrong they are, they are your parents. How many were thought that an elderly person deserves to be respected like your father? How many of you were thought to become lawyers and doctors and engineers and professionals? How many of you? Good. That's why your role model is Obama, not your pastor. Because, we, yes, we can. No, you don't. Because while academics takes you up, values paint you up. L -l Let me prove a point. Bring me your seat. Bring me your seat. Bring me your seat. Just one person. Quickly, sir. Listen. Right there. Right here. While opportunities and gifts and talents and academics can elevate you up. But the seat up here is a seat established by values, virtues, and principles. When you have no God, this place becomes a place of destruction. Because it is only God that can sustain a position of grace. Listen, that's why we live in a society where we have no respect. I came to learn this. A man or a woman who does not respect their father and their mother, you can show it by their attitude towards their pastor. I look at your behaviors and I can tell your upbringing. I can tell your relationship with your parents. I can tell why some of you cannot succeed in town. Because the way you left home, your father said, one problem just left my house. I'm serious. Because out of the abundance, the mouth, listen, a man who was raised well, you can tell by how they treat the head of their department, how they treat older women, how they treat elderly men, and ultimately how they treat their pastor. If you can't gossip your father, you can't gossip your pastor. Because both are your parents. If you respect your elder brother, you will respect an elder brother in the church. If you respect your elder sister, you will respect an elder brother. Listen, a generation without value becomes slaves to a generation with values. I'm about to finish. But the ultimate is who? Christ. Talk to me. The ultimate is who? Listen, friends. Marriage is useless if marriage is between a man and a woman living in the same house and acquiring everything they need to acquire and making some babies. Anybody can do that. Even animals do that. Don't brag about the wife and the husband you have. Cows make babies. Chicken do. Don't be proud. Animals make more babies. And we eat them and they don't complain. <laughs> you make one and you want the world to stop. Because they look like you. Imagine if an old man like me, the only pride I have is where I live, the woman I married, and the children I have and what I drive. Useless, meaningless. The value of my life is in the change I see in you. Yes. When I see you become better, I am rich. Yes. When I see people give their lives to Christ, I'm becoming wealthier. Yes. When I see families live well, I am rich. When I see people discover their gift and their calling, I am successful. Yes. That's why I'm a preacher. Yes. When politicians see their party grow, they are doing well. Yes. When do you feel well? Politicians are happy when they increase.